I'm liking this American boy, American boy. Take me on a trip, I'd like to go someday. Hello again from Denmark. Um, I have to apologize for not making a blog post for so long. It's just, it's, it's easy to get caught up in things here. Um, I'm, uh, you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm still a little bit hungover. It was out till six last night, uh, which is a common time to go home, apparently for Danes. I think it's pretty crazy, but that's how they do it. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm on my second cup of coffee, feeling a little better. And I want to make a blog post about this past weekend, uh, because I went on a study tour with, uh, my positive psychology class. Um, so this Thursday, we all loaded up onto this charter bus and we left Copenhagen and we're driving, we're driving, we're driving through, you know, beautiful Danish countryside. And all of a sudden we came up on this massive bridge called Storbelt, which means in Danish, Great Belt Bridge. It connects the islands of Sheelan and Foon, and it's something like two and a half times the length of the Golden Gate Bridge. It took us 10 minutes just to drive across it. The pylons of the bridge are actually the tallest structures in Denmark. So it was, it was pretty crazy to see. We get to the other side of the bridge and we stop at this rest stop. And normally I'd never, you know, mention a rest stop in a blog post, but it was like, I hesitate to even call it a, a rest stop because it's like the most pristine little beach. You know, the water was super clean. Uh, it was really, really nice. So I did a little bit of time-lapse photography. Um, after that, we all loaded back up onto the bus and uh, our next major stop was um, a prison. Uh, a Danish open prison and it's called an open prison because um, there's no walls and there's no fences um, they don't even lock the front gates during the day and it was actually a really beautiful little like manor it used to be like a, a mansion or something um, and uh, it was just crazy I didn't even know that things like that existed and uh, they certainly don't exist in the states as far as I know but um, the inmates are allowed to leave every third weekend. They can go and visit their family. Um, their girlfriends and wives can come and visit them every weekend. Uh, they work uh, at the prison and earn a little bit of money, and they go shopping twice a week and cook their own food. Um, they can go to school while they're there. And, uh, you know, so it's pretty progressive and pretty uh, cushy compared to American prisons. One inmate described it as, um, as uh, kindergarten, which I thought was a pretty accurate description. Um, and it was really cool to see, actually, and the whole thinking behind it is that uh, it helps to reintegrate the prisoners back into society because the Danes have the thought that when they do release prisoners, they want them to be as productive and as, uh, you know, as normal members of society as they can. Um, because oftentimes when you go to prison, uh, you know, if you go to prison for 10 years, you come out and the world's a totally different place and they have a really hard time adjusting back into society. Um, and, you know, the crazy thing is it, it worked. In general, people weren't running away because they knew if they ran away, they would get most likely caught and sent back to closed prison, which is like hard, not fun, more like U.S. prison. And um, they all behave, too, because if they misbehave, they lose leave, pri leave pri privileges. So they're not allowed to go out on the weekend and visit their family, which is their, which is their biggest motivation. Um, so, you know, it was really interesting to see uh, the prison. I think the Danes sort of have the opposite um, thought about prison in the U.S., whereas we lock people up for a very long time. Most people in Denmark um, don't go to prison for more than 12 years. And while I'm not sure the Danish system would work in the U.S., um, it did work there. Uh, people weren't running away, and the guards and the prisoners were you know, friendly with each other, and it was, it was working. It was really cool to see, and um, I thought that it was a really interesting take on prisons. So after we were done visiting the prison, we all loaded back up onto the bus and headed towards where we were going to be staying for the night, which we had been told was a hostel. So I'm thinking like a small, cheap place for students to stay. But um, as we're driving up to it, it's, uh, we're in this forest and um, we're checking it out and it's, it's the whole place is like a campground. It's on this huge, beautiful lake. Um, gorgeous sunset where we walk out on this dock and we meet up with these other positive psychology yeah. students who are yeah. there yeah. Really and we're checking out where we're staying it's this awesome cabin and uh, you know that night we just all hung out we had a bonfire roasted marshmallows um, just chilled and it was, it was a great way to end end the day all right so I'm just gonna try and push through the rest of this because this video is already getting too long but the next day we wake up get back on the bus travel to Aarhus which is the second biggest city in Denmark um, we do some other positive psychology workshops, and uh, afterwards we go to a cafe and celebrate um, one of another student's, uh, it was his birthday, we had some, enjoyed some cake and some hot chocolate. Um, then we go to the hotel and we're all excited because we get to go out in a new city and check it out, have a night on our own, 
and it just so happens there's a festival going on that night. Um, I still don't even know what the festival was about, but uh, there's tons of people out on the street, and the two really cool things I saw was first, these street performers, these break dancers, which I'm just gonna play the clips of that because I can't even describe what that was. <laughs> Um, these musicians. Uh, I've seen a lot of musicians actually since I've been here in Denmark and it's usually Danish performers doing covers of American songs but they've all been fucking awesome. They're really good. So after we had checked out the street performers and the musicians and everything, we head down to the canals and hang out and then you know we check out the nightlife in Aarhus, which was um, really awesome and uh, it, was, it was a great night. So the next morning we wake up and uh, some of us are a little more hungover than others, but uh, regardless, we head to the uh, Aarhus Museum of Modern Art and um, really cool place. And one of the first things we check out is this statue or, uh, well, some of us think it's a statue, some of us think it's a street performer. It takes us about 20 minutes to figure out which one it is. And uh, after that, um, we saw a sculpture called Boy, but I think it should be called Big Boy because it was about 20 feet tall, um, done by this Australian artist, and it was really cool to see. And uh, then probably my favorite thing was um, the Rainbow Bridge, which was up on the roof of the building. It was this circular bridge you could walk through that went through all the colors of the rainbow. So um, that was it. That was pretty much the whole trip. Uh, you know, I wasn't really sure what to expect when we were leaving, but I had a blast. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, if you're still watching the video at this point, thank you. I know if you're like me, uh, getting through more than a five minute video can be a struggle, but um, you know, I'm trying to make these blog, blog posts as interesting as I can. and. Um, learning as I'm going, figuring it out, so uh, comment, let me know what you guys think, good or bad, and um, hopefully I'll post more soon, so thanks for watching.